Hey, this is Jody with WeldingTipsAndTricks.com with another weekly video. This week we're welding some thin wall alloy steel tubing for a bicycle frame. Before we get into that too deeply, I want to say a special thanks to Mike Zancanato of Zancanato Custom Cycles who provided the coped uh, tubing for me for the bike kit. And you can check out some of his work at Zancanato.com. Got some really cool pictures of braised lug fittings like this, but he wanted to step up his game and get into TIG welding. And so he went to the Lincoln TIG School, and now a year or so later, he's doing TIG welds like this that are basically flawless. So go check out his work at zancanato.com. And if you know anybody that needs a custom cycle, I'm giving him a plug right here because I can tell he, he, uh, he puts a lot of detail into his work. Well, last week we welded these little sample pieces that he provided. One of them using an ER70S2 filler rod at 33 pulses a second. We did everything at 33 pulses a second. And then we got finished with that uh, ER70S2 filler rod. Did a little bit of uh, welding with the, another rod that the tubing manufacturer recommended called Weld Mold 880, which seemed to me to weld a whole lot like a 312 type stainless. But it doesn't have to be 312. It's probably got. It might have a little more chromium or something like that in it. But anyway, welded really nice. And then after I was done, I whopped them up pretty good with a hammer, and they held up pretty good both sides, the uh, E70 and the uh, and the weld mold 880. I asked Mike Zancanato if he'd send me a few clips of uh, the tubing coping process, and of course he wants a precision fit. He's building custom cycles, high-end custom cycles. He pays a lot of attention to detail. And the only way to get a good fit uh, repeatedly is with, with some tooling like this. At least, at least the only way to get it in a reasonable amount of time. You can get it other ways, and I'll talk about it in a minute. But using a hole saw and uh, on a mill, that's how he does it. And then he's got the fixture that clocks the, uh, the piece as if it was fitting up to where the, the other member. And so everything comes out with a, with a really good fit that you can barely stick a hair in, if you could even do that, because these are some really tight really accurate fit ups and that's how you get good looking welds just with really good fit ups and of course less distortion and takes less time to weld it so any time spent getting the good fit is pretty much pretty much saved in the welding process so overall time spent not any greater now you see the fixturing here has got ports for purge gas he purges all of his with argon on the inside just the best practice this is steel tubing so some people do some people don't uh, purge it but Mike does and again, about coping tubing, an option is to go to metalgeek.com. they got a tube coping calculator there at that site. You can just Google Metal Geek and tube coping calculator. It'll be the number one site. And it'll generate, when you put in your tubing diameter, wall thickness, and angle of the joint, it'll generate a little template like this. You print it out, wrap it around the tube, make your mark, and, uh, and you're off and running. It's, you, know, you have to cut it with a bandsaw and then file it or grind it, but you will get, you will get a good fit if you take enough care. Now, problems I ran into here are different diameters on practically every tube. You see, I had to write them down here so I would know about how much to shim. Pretty much, except for two tubes on this frame, the diameters differed enough so that I couldn't just lay them flat on the table. And I'm just using this piece here. Not, uh, I'm not going to be able to tack weld it just yet. And again, you can see the, uh, the holes drilled for purge gas, which I'm not using. But I just used it just, just to get the fit for right now. Just smacked it up against there, and uh, I'll get tack welds on all this stuff, and then I'll put this in on later when I put the piece upright. So I had to use shim pieces, some 120 and some 40 thousandths shim pieces to get uh, to get things pretty much where I could lay them down on the on the on the table here. And I'm using a strong hand tools build pro table with modular fixturing package. And I just kind of suspected it would it would be able to handle a bicycle frame like this pretty well. And sure enough, it, it's got enough versatility that didn't have much trouble putting this thing together. But did require shim pieces. So this is this is the setup here. I've got a little spring-loaded mechanism holding it up against two backstops on one side, and then some various other clamps with with V with swivel V pads with magnets on them holding everything down against the shims. And I'm going to get tack wells all over the place. Now here's a here's a problem when you're tack welding really thin stuff like this. This is for the most part 32 thousandths. The corner wants to melt first, and if that little edge melts, what I do is I just stop and I light up again and get the thicker piece to melt, and then I carry the filler metal over to the thin piece. If you just melt that corner, which that's where the arc wants to go, 
uh, and then just run off the gas, you will, uh, you'll just melt it away. So after I get, you know, two or three tacks on each side, and it's not going to really move much, and then I flip it over nice and easily, and then we get two or three tacks on each joint uh, here as well, and then I'll put it back the other way to weld that side, what I can get at, and then flop it around and clamp it all down again and, uh, and weld it again. So I'm just bouncing around using the editing here to speed things up so you don't have to watch and endure all the slow stuff. But I, now that I've got it all tacked up both sides, I'm clamping it down again, making sure my shim, my shim pieces are, are directly underneath the, uh, the clamps. So I get it all locked down and it really is not going not gonna to move a whole lot. Even though I'm, I'm restricted to only welding on one side at a time, it's just really not going to go a whole lot of places when, with, uh, with it all locked down, rigid like this. It can't move a whole lot. Unless I get carried away and start washing over welds or go extremely slow or put an extremely big pass on there or anything. Alright, once again, this is the Weld Mold 880 rod. 33 pulses a second. 33% on time on the pulse and 33% background current. And the, uh, the rod is about 35 thousandths in diameter. I'm using a 1 16th electrode, 2% laminated electrode. I got the machine set on about 60 to 65 because you need more when you're pulsing to, to get the output of the average amperage. Otherwise, without pulse, I would set it about 1 amp per every thousandths, which, mean I would, which means I would set it about probably about 30 to 35 amps and if I wasn't using pulse. And I would still use a foot pedal to uh, back off when I needed to. But with pulse, you have to use a little bit more amperage. And you can hear that pulse, you know, how, how fast it's fluttering. And what it does, it just controls heat just a little bit. It's not completely necessary for doing something like this. I find it does help. And if you've got a machine like a Dynasty 200DX or a Lincoln Invertec 2, uh, V205 that will pulse, you know, at that rate, then it, you'll find it, it does help. Now, for getting down, down in this little tight spot here, this is where a big cup comes in handy. Uh, you either have to use a really small cup and where you get the whole cup down in there or you can use a big cup, a big flood cup like this where you can extend the electrode out to get in there. And I sped that up there again so you can just kind of see the, uh, the coverage and uh, how I got way down in there and all that kind of stuff. So I wouldn't use this for the whole frame because it just uses up all your argon. Now, what I'm doing here, this is some 063 thousandths uh, chromoly tubing with no pulse. You, you know, again, if you've got good fit-ups and, uh, and the metal's thick enough, using no pulse is no problem. It sure is. It's a nice, smooth arc. It's less to fool with. Pulse, like, again, pulse is not, not really a necessity. It's just a, another tool on your tool belt. And I like to use it for lots of different applications. And, and uh, thin wall tubing or where there's gaps or where I'm welding near an edge would be where I, li I like to use pulse. See, that's without pulse, but it's 063 thousandths. Now what I'm showing you right here is some pretty thick stainless steel where I'm using about 70 to 80 pulses a second. And what it does there is it really, really directs, it really focuses the arc and, and keeps the, the bead from getting too big and keeps the edge of that bead from wicking and wandering over to the edge and melting a corner off. So there's lots of, lots of uses for pulse welding high speed, low speed. The only thing I, I, I would say is I either want to pulse at about one pulse a second or over 30. Pretty much nothing in between because it's annoying when, it, when it's really flickering and hard to focus on. So once again we're getting back to the thin wall tubing and you see how I'm kind of inching that puddle ahead just a little at a time and then I'm backing up over the thick part of the weld so that I don't blow a hole and because again there's some of this stuff this is 032 wall but some of the wall thicknesses in bike tube uh, tubes are a lot thinner than that so just you don't want to take real big steps ahead if you, especially if you have any gap at all or anything if you take a real small step and then back up while you add rod you'll hardly ever blow a hole and for certain welds like this where I'm propping right next to where I just welded and it's really hot TIG finger really handy you can lay in there for about as long as you want with the TIG finger on your fingers not going to get uh, get hot like it would if you just prop your bare glove uh, close to a weld like that comes in handy. You could always put blocks up or prop on something else uh, uh, you know, to, to get that well done, but when you got the TIG finger, you just prop right wherever you want to. And there again, there's a hole you see where the purge. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get, uh, get some dimensions and carry them on back to the back part of the bicycle so I can get everything lined up. And I did that. 
didn't wind up capturing on the camera, but we got a center line carrying it backwards, and these are some of the little strong hand tools, magnetic V pads. Really handy for holding little small parts like this, little small steel tubing or small steel parts that are just hard to find a, a way to clamp them. Little V pads swivel and they clamp uh, pretty much any angle, and, and uh, or actually hold with a magnet pretty much any angle. And there's a there's another clamp holding that. And now I've got to get all this line lined up and straight down here, but I've got these holes indexed, so it's very easy to put a square or a straight edge up against that thing and line them up. And then I got that lined up with a center line carrying backwards, all line, true, plumb, everything else. And wasn't that big a deal using the, the tooling package with the, uh, the strong hand table. And now it's all ready to weld up, and that is what I did. More of the same, same pulse rates, but from the, the whole back end of it, I welded with the ER-70 rod. And then carried it outside and whooped on it for quite a while. So, sped it up here so again, so it wouldn't, it wouldn't uh, show me getting out of breath and everything. <laughs> but I wanted to pretty much get a pretty good stress on every weld on there, or most of them anyway, the, the Weld Mold 880 as well as the ER-70 rods. And see one side there on the bottom is the ER-70 and on the top is the Weld Mold. Both sides held up really well. I was able to get this weld to fracture. That's an ER-70S rod, uh, mild steel rod. Fractured on the toe of the weld, not you know on the weld itself, which makes sense. It's a pretty thick weld right up against the O32 wall tubing, but I wasn't able to fracture any of the weld mold rods, so that was kind of surprising. So once again, that was the Strong Hand Tools Build Pro table I used to fit up the bicycle. And thanks for watching. Visit WeldingTipsAndTricks.com.